for the artists, for the passionate. Welcome to the Adventures Elsewhere podcast. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Adventures Elsewhere podcast, or welcome if it's your first time. I am your host, Jay Black, and today I am tackling one of the things that's really been getting my goat since kind of forever, but it's particularly bad with how many pitch contests there have been lately and there are a lot coming up. I'm talking comp titles. And now this is a bit of a hot potato, it's a bit of a hot topic. It gets a lot of people's goats, there are a lot of silly, in air quotes, rules and things around comps, and I'm here to talk about how stupid really all of it is. So there are two common ways you see comp titles done, and the first is book A, X, book B, so that as an example could be The Great Gatsby and The Matrix, I mean yes The Matrix isn't a book, it's a film, but People would use multimedia examples as well. The other version you see is, say, Desi, Alice in Wonderland. And I think really, no matter which way you do this, they're inherently unclear. And this is a huge problem. So let's talk about quite why they're so unclear. So let's talk about the AXB version, so Great Gatsby x The Matrix, because this is the version, the way people use comp titles more often than not, this is the one you see most. And the thing is with this is you look at that and you always think, okay but how do these two things get crossed, how do they connect? Is it a plot thing? Is this a character thing? Is this a vibe thing? What do you actually mean by this? What do you mean by the great Gatsby crossed with the Matrix? Do you mean, you know, a great Gatsby-like plot set in a sci-fi type setting? Do you mean a Matrix style plot set in a great Gatsby sort of thing? What, what do you mean? I haven't got a clue based off that. I mean, even if you try and comp something that's a lot, you know, closer, say you take the Chronicles of Narnia and Lord of the Rings, they're both fantasy, it's still not really clear what you actually mean by that, necessarily. And I think the ethnic book A thing is actually worse for this, so Desi, Alice in Wonderland was what I threw out earlier. This is particularly unclear to me, because are you quite literally writing Alice in Wonderland but changing the casting, because that's what immediately comes to mind to me, or are you reinventing this so that it's not, you know, English Tea Party, White Rabbit and all of that, are you changing that to be more Desi culture driven. What does it mean? I don't know. Is it something else entirely? It could be. I have absolutely no idea based off reading Desi, Alice in Wonderland. I don't know what that means. Then what happens here is your pitch stops being about your book. It's actually about the comp titles and how they combine and what you actually mean by that. Because if you don't do that, and some people don't, they just have an ordinary book pitch afterwards, 90% of the time when you do that, I read the pitch and think that sounds good, but what does that have anything to do with how on earth does that have anything to do with Narnia and Lord of the Rings? 
you've got something that sounds completely unique, but then you're saying, no, nah, you're in Lord of the Rings, and I don't understand how this relates to that at all. So then if you're, if you're going to explain how the comps combine, which you especially need to do in a query letter, but even in a pitch event, well, having gotten the publishing contract off, off a pitch event, you have 280 characters. It's tight. It's really, really tight. And, you know, you've got your comp titles that you want to get in at the top and your hashtags that you'll need at the bottom. And depending on what you're writing, you could need quite a lot of different tags. Plus comps, you're easily looking at 280 characters being cut down to 200. Very, very quickly. I mean, I'm always amazed by how much space pitch hashtags take up because they take up way more than you think. And if you're trying to explain how your comps combine in 200 characters, firstly, good luck with that. And second, where's there any room for your book and how your book is a unique take on anything in that much space? You think you can get all of that into 200 characters? Because I don't think you can. As in, objectively, I don't think that's possible. You could try and sort of elaborate it with a mood board, but... Again, good luck with that. And as soon as you have text on a mood board, some people are going to get really funny about that. But you don't escape the problem with a query letter either, because the meat part of your query letter, the sort of back blurb style pitch part of it, you want to be round about 250 words, no more than 300 for certain. And if you're trying to explain in proper full prose how your comps combine, plus a pitch for your book, telling talking about what's unique about it and in 250 words, even if you're really, really good at microfiction and flash fiction as someone who started out there, that's really hard. And it's only going to get worse the longer your book is, because if you're talking about, you know, adult fantasy that's, you know, 90k, say, I mean, that can be pretty short for adult fantasy. If you're talking about epic fantasy, 150k, you're trying to pitch a 150,000 word book, potentially, in 250 words. Firstly, good fucking luck with that. Second, you've got to try and explain comp titles in there as well as doing that. You're going to have a fun time doing that, aren't you? And then there's always the argument about, well, isn't this what the additional information, like three sentences you get after that is about? Firstly, a, there's a whole school of thought that actually you shouldn't include those sentences and just go straight on to, I live in the UK, by the way, a little bit about you as the author. There's an argument that you shouldn't include those extra few sentences. I did in my query letter that ultimately got me the contract, but what I did with that room is I sort of hit trope buzzwords, little proverb buzzwords and things like that, and that felt really, really clean. When I tried to do that as comps, which I did try and do with Black Executioner, despite that just not really working, to be honest, it made it look like the comps were an afterthought because you've got all this stuff about okay hi i'm talking to you about my book black executioner that's seventy thousand words however many chapters it is however many pages it is big blurb pitch oh by the way there are comps it doesn't look right at all and you can try and move that section up and say oh, and here are my comps, and blah, 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 but that's not within a standard query template. And if you're talking about Trapper, people are almost definitely going to have a problem with that. The thing is, we're not even close to the limit on how ridiculous comps can get. Because the very first sort of rule I saw about comps was don't use classics 
for comps. This one has been around for a while. And the reason I've seen for this is that, well, you're not that good. You're not writing, you know. You know, you can't comp to the Great Gatsby because you're not that skilled a writer. You know, you're just arrogant. Well, to an extent, I do understand that. I also disagree with that on the principle of, well, you have no idea who's behind that pitch, necessarily. They might have already written a book that's been called a modern classic, in which case, isn't it fair game? But also, what if you're writing a retelling? Like, I'm serious, what if you're writing a retelling of The Great Gatsby? What if that's what you're doing? Are you then not allowed to use The Great Gatsby as a comp because that's arrogant? Because some people would actually argue, yes, you can't do that. So then you try and have you have to try and veil that it's a Great Gatsby retelling, even though the line, Great Gatsby retelling, is a way better line for marketing. And if pitching and query letters, if that's not marketing your book to, you know, agents, editors, whoever, I don't really know what it is. So it's kind of saying, well, you have to market your book, but not like that. Market it, but not that well. And that is batshit. It is. That is straight up batshit. Especially when marketing, when, especially when it comes to comps. It's like, just lies anyway. Like, it is. If as a consumer of books, films, games, TV shows, games not so much, you don't see this very often with the games industry, but particularly TV, things get comped that just shouldn't because people know what it is. I mean, how many things get comped to Lord of the Rings on Netflix or Amazon? because people know what Lord of the Rings is, even though it has no business being comp to Lord of the Rings, because there's nothing about it other than, oh, hey, that's an epic fantasy. You see this all the time, and it actually puts me off now, because if if I see something comp to, say, John Wick, I think, yeah, it's not, though. It's, it's not going to be like John Wick. You're touting John Wick because you know people love John Wick, and rightly so, it's a great film. But because you know it's a marketing ploy at the end of the day, you just sort of look at it and think, I don't think this is actually anything like John Wick. I think this is a marketing ploy, and you've now put me off watching what is potentially actually something I'll really like. And the same thing happens with books too. The other rule that you see with comps, and this is a much more recent one, and this is getting just about everybody's backs up at this point, is your comp title shouldn't be any more than two years old. This is a genuine thing people are saying. And oh boy, there are so many flaws to this. And firstly, well, let's just talk about the publishing timeline, shall we? I mean, especially in Trap Pub, but... Increasingly, as indie houses grow, you know, timelines get longer, schedules and all of that, you know, they happen. That's actually something I've been dealing with today. <laughs> but when I interviewed NJ Alexander on this podcast, we were talking about publishing timelines in Trab Pub and all of that because we were talking about why he went self pub with Fogbound. And one of the reasons he touted was how long the Trap Pub timeline is, ignoring, you know, the whole getting agented thing. The timeline within the publishing house, once you get to that stage. And, you know, this was 2023, we were talking, and I was saying to him at the time that I had seen book deals being announced in Trap Pub that were 2026 and 2027. You know, that's three, four years... And if you're lucky in Trap Pub, you'll get maybe two to three. But they don't want comps that are more than two years old. You starting to see what's happening here? Because the argument with this no older than two years is that if it's older than two years, it's no longer relevant. 
So I look at your timeline and I see that's three years and I say, OK, well, why are you acquiring a book that you think is relevant now and then waiting two, three years to publish it? You're going to publish it once it's irrelevant. Is that what you're trying to, is that what you're telling me? Because you can't have that both ways. And there's maybe you're trying to do the foresight thing and you're trying to predict, oh, but I think this will blow up in two years. But generally speaking, that's not what's happening. That's a very, very rare case. And it's also assuming, on top of everything else, that everything that's relevant now will be relevant in two years and the romanticy trend isn't going to die in that time for starters which is um a very big if especially when something's been going for a couple of years and that's all that anybody's interested in publishing at the minute that's a very 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 big if we mean i've talked about this before on the don't write to market episode but it's also, on top of that, assuming that agents and editors have the time and knowledge of everything that's been released in the past two years that's at all significant. That they have good, fresh, up-to-date knowledge on that. They haven't really forgotten anything while they do all of the other stuff that, that it doesn't makes sense. And I did actually see a really good criticism of com titles on Twitter. I can't remember who said it, which is very annoying. I really wish I'd made a note. But they said that if you use com titles and you then have to explain all that, you're basically highlighting what's generic about your book and the most generic parts of it rather than what makes it unique, what actually gives it its unique selling point that you need. And this is very true, actually. Because you're spending all of your time explaining how the comps relate to your book. There's nothing about your actual book. There's nothing about how unique it is, in which case, why should anyone bother with it? Why shouldn't they just go read John Wick again instead? Well, go watch John Wick again. Go read Lord of the Rings again. So it encourages people to only write stuff that's more generic, that fits more of these moulds, more things that are closer to the Save the Cat beat sheet and that template. And what that ultimately leads to is locking marginalised voices out of publishing. Let me elaborate. Because the Save the Cat beat sheet is written, you know, to this specific Western story. You know, it's this Western story template and comp titles do a similar thing. You know, it's stuff that's within the past two years that's published by, you know, whoever makes it in Trad Pub, who's probably white. Who's probably white, probably from the US, maybe the UK, writing, you know, what they know and love in their way to the Save the Cat Beat Sheet. And it locks out other story styles and templates and ways of storytelling from anyone and everyone else. So there's a whole narrative about, well, we want more marginalised authors, we want more marginalised stories. But when push comes to shove and you're saying, but we want comp titles that are this and beat sheets that are that, what you're actually saying is, Doing your whole big cultural thing that we supposedly want is wrong because it doesn't fit our template, so actually we don't want it, and we don't want you. And this is why comp titles are actually really quite harmful, and unique books are great, and indie books are the future, once again. Because people are bored of being told the same story over and over again. It's like Hollywood only making remakes. People are bored out of their minds with it. So... They're not watching it, they're not reading it, they're finding indie stuff that's better. Same with games. I mean, look how big the indie gaming thing, the whole indie game industry is now. And if you don't believe the whole 
oh, people will just do the original. People will just reread the original instead of the generic, you know, clone or this or that. Well, how big is the Stardew Valley community compared to the myriad of Stardew Valley clones? Everybody's just playing Stardew Valley rather than the clones. But I think that's about all I have for this episode. And talking about, this has all been about books and how to get them published. And so, if you are published, or well on the way, please do get in touch. Do that via email, it's on the screen. If you're Indian self-pub, you are the people I want to hear from the most. There's no genre restriction, there's no age category restriction, doesn't have to be a novel, novellas are welcome, short story collections, whatever you've got, bring it in, let's see what we can do. Just read the description and include all that information first so that it can all go smoothly. If you're looking for me elsewhere at all, if you're here, you're probably looking for the home of the podcast, and that is Instagram. I'm jade underscore black 21 on there. You'll get advance notice of what the episode for the week is, as well as other weird and wonderful things. I'm trying to do more with the indie book community over on Instagram as well. You don't want to miss that. Jade underscore black 21 on Instagram. If you're looking for more stuff about my writing, semi-live updates, and potentially to join the Monthly Thrills Prompts community, that is Twitter. I'm JadeBlack21 on there. And if you're looking for exclusive art and world building and things like that, you'll be interested in my Pinterest. I'm Jade underscore Black21 on there. And until next time, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a like. It helps the channel a lot. Intro and outro music by me. Copyright J Black 2024.